Hi guys. Hello. Hope you've, hope you've had a good week. Earned a few quid. I won thirty pounds on the Polish lotto. Bardzo fajnie. Yeah? Today we're going on another walk. We're going to do a bit more of the old family tree. We've already looked at my granddad's side. We're going to continue on that theme, but we're going to do my granddad's granddad's side. Two sets of great, great, great grandparents of mine. So let us begin with Peter Vernon and his wife, Sarah Ann Barton. They lived in Ashton in Makerfield. That's where we're going now. You know what? The weather's turned out nice. It was horrible all morning, and now the sun is shining. Now then, history is our link with the past. And I have been doing my family tree research for many years. I took up where my mum left off. This is just a section from my researches. This is my Vernon side. This has been done down at the old St. Helens History Archives, as was on the old Fiche, microfiche records. And as times have progressed using Ancestry, my heritage, the Lancashire Online Parish Clarks. So, let me just show you a little bit of my horror research. Can you read here, Dallam Lane? I can't read them dry. <laughs> a bit dangerous. <laughs> and then we have John Barton, he was 15. He was an MS, which apparently was a male servant. That's it. And Dallam Lane was there, yeah. And the bloke whose house he was living in, John Bate, was a farmer. Skipping ahead now to 1851, we see John Barton age 26, unmarried, in Back Lane, Great Sankey. Back Lane is literally opposite the entrance to Fiddler's Ferry Power Station. He was a farmer of 15 acres of land, employing one agricultural labourer. Not bad, the age of 26. Which is quite surprising considering that he was a farmer for his younger years. By the time we get to 1861, we find John Barton, has married his wife, Emma Atherton. They actually got married in St. Oswald's in Winnick, which is just up the road there. 1861, we see them here at the Caledonian Inn at the top end of Ashton. And John Barton, here we are, 38. I don't know how he's aged 12 years in 10 years, but there you go. <laughs> he was a beer seller. Maybe the census wasn't A beer seller at the Caledonian on Town Green. So that's where we're gonna go now. To the Caledonian, aye. Caledonian. But we can't have a paint unless we have a right good meal. Oh, Continue yeah. sur l'autoroute M6. Pretty cool roundabout. Oh yeah. I only just noticed that because I wonder what the truck was going to do. A bit of gymnastics there. So, we're coming in through Bryn, top end of Ashton. Oh, in three quarters of a mile, turn left onto Bryn Road. Yeah. 30 mile per hour speed limit camera ahead. Please watch your speed. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice that she tells me that. Hi guys. It's we've raining. It. We've made it to Ashton though. And look what's it's here. The rain. The pub. The Caledonian. Shout out to Hazel. If you have a little look, it says this was built in 1896. So obviously in 1861 and 1871, when the Bartons had this place, it would have been a completely different building. This was rebuilt in the late Victorian period. I wonder what the Scottish connection is. Hmm. Has it got a thistle on it? Obviously Wigan is still in tier three, so it can't open. But we just wanted to come down and do a bit of family history. Very nice. Well, I don't know if you noticed on the census, but it called this area Town Green. The Caledonian Town Green. Which is where we are. Ashton is where my granddad grew up. When his mother died, when he was nine, he moved here with his dad and his parents. And they had the pub, the King's Arms, right up at the top end of town. Which is where we're going to go and then turn back, probably. In fact, my family over the generations lived in the Caledonian. The Red Lion, which is the one we're hoping to see, that's the one the Vernons had. And then my granddad in the King's Arms. Now, it's wet, 
It's cold. It has actually stopped to be fair now. And all my bits and bobs are in the bag. Now I know for a fact that in one year when the census was taken, the ancestors, I think it was Emma Barton, lived pretty much just here, where that bit of grass is actually. But the houses were probably just like those manky ones that are behind us. This bit of grass is where the house over. was. Oh, here. St. Helens! Hey, there we go! Oh. Ashton in Makerfield. This whole area of Lancashire, as was, was called Makerfield. You'll have heard of Newton Lewillers, but that was also alternatively known as Newton in Makerfield. Oh, was it? Yeah, ah. just as this is. So you've got Ashton, Ashton in Makerfield. and then you've got Ince in Makerfield, yeah. just outside of Wigan as well nowadays. Well, of course, more will have gone up in the years. Following oh, 18, there. there was loads of pubs on this stretch. My family didn't live in all of them. Mate, there's some beautiful old buildings. Look at this one. The Robin Pub. This is probably a pub at one point as well. Yeah. Old pub. Bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do when they come for you, bad boys? Right, if you come from Grin. If you swim that round past Bad Boys, you come down off that road. I remember passing Bad Boys now. Yeah. Look at it. What's with all the Welsh stuff and the Scottish stuff in this town? Uh, is there a Welsh connection? This is for my granddad. We are going to do a walkthrough now of Ashton High Street. You can see how much has changed since you were last year. I know Subway's on the left. Which was probably last week actually, because you said you'd driven through here, but. Forlorn looking where the spoon and everything. Are the charity shops open? I think they are. They should be from today, yeah. Hey, we've done a shout out to Hazel. Let's do a shout out to Coral. But again, it either can't open of tier 3 or because of lack of food. I think it's probably shut mate. Erected 1893. But do you know what, I sent you a picture. When I first came down here, when I was doing my family tree research, I think it was 2005, the pub finished here. This whole section on the right mm. is an extension and a pretty recent one as well. But do you know what, it's all right. It blends, you wouldn't have thought that'd be much newer. If you just look at it from a glance, like you're no, driving it's very, long. very well done. Yeah, it is very well done. I will add my photograph that I took in 2005 of it before the extension. Good job. The red line, everyone. We kind of planned to sit in here and have some food and a drink and talk about the family who lived here. But we Let don't even know if it does food, to be fair. Let me try and remember what I can about Peter Vernon. I know for a fact, as a young man, when he was in his 20s, he moved and lived in Wigan and he was a draper. That's someone who hangs curtains. But I think it was when his father died, Thomas Vernon, that Peter and his wife, Sarah Ann, moved in and took over the pub, the Red Lion. I think they were only married six, seven years. He died. I don't know why. He was 32 when he died, Peter Vernon, my great, great, great grandfather. Also on the Vernon side, see the pub, the Golden Lion. My family lived in the building next door. Ashton Pound Plus Limited. Wouldn't have been there at the time, I don't suppose, because yeah. we don't really use pounds back then. We used uh, shillings. shillings the eh? Here we are, the top end of town now. Look, blue sky. What there is in a little shopping centre just around this corner is a model train shop on the upper floor. Ooh, it's quite fascinating. Up. Let me tell you about a place called Squeeze Belly Entry. That's what they called it. Squeeze belly entry. Squeeze belly entry. I like the sound of that. It's because when you went through it, you had to squeeze your belly in to get past each other. You 
in the distance there, can you see Winter Hill? I can see Winter Hill. Rivington Pike. Wintry. That's where me and Jan went the other week. Let me take you to the pub where my granddad grew up. The King's Arms. King's Arms. Here's the pub now on Warrington Road. It's all boarded up, shut down. I believe they're going to be turning it into an Indian. And the windows smashed or partly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that one's definitely had better days. James, if you can see those gates on the left hand side, I the ones with, the, with CCTV in operation, exactly. which wouldn't have been there in the 1800s. When my granddad moved to this pub in the 1940s, late 30s, 1940s, he said they were the exact same gates that were there and that they were old back then. There's a photo of my granddad in his late teens with his friend Brian and they've got a model aircraft just crouched behind them gates. I'll have to add that to the video. But it's sad to see it all like this, shut down, boarded up. I remember the night of my mum and dad's wedding back in 1994, I was 11. I was missing my mum something terribly. My granddad brought me up here and he showed me where he grew up. In the country. Bloody busy little road this. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Most indicate, some don't. Mate, the doors. Yeah. Hello, is Mr. Vernon in, please? <laughs> Bless. Imagine if someone comes home in it now, though. <laughs> what do you want? That would be quite weird. Benny's karaoke. I wonder what fittings here are original. I wonder when it was last open, because that blackboard. Well, I've been in, um, but it'd be a few years back. I think the late 2000s was the decline of pubs, well, the start of. And then it uh, continues up to 10. King's Arms! Is this wood? No, oh, stone now. King's Arms, Liverpool Road, Ashton. Oh, this is Liverpool, oh yeah. Is that Liverpool Road as well? Or does it change? That's Gerrard Street. Ah, the Sir Thomas Gerrard is the weather spoon, so that'll explain things. Look at the Run! I think this is part of the pub, see the one with the smashed windows? Uh, yeah. yeah. I seem to remember my granddad saying that his granddad's bedroom was at the back. That might have been a little alleyway or a ginnel at one point because those walls look newer. I don't know, maybe it wasn't. That maybe wall at the back, I think this was all open at the back originally. Because there is that photo, like I said, of my granddad and his friend Brian Walker with their model plane that they built. Model planes are awesome, I love them. What a state. Yeah. What a shame. What would be amazing, right, is if we could come back in time to the 1940s when World War II was coming on. Because obviously you had the American Army base down at Burton Wood. And they were all stationed around here. My granddad remembers, because there was also a prisoner of war camp for the Germans and the Italians. My granddad remembers the fights that used to break out between the Americans and the locals and stuff like that. So. Here they are, the gates. The famous gates. It's got to wait for these lights to turn red. I wonder if those are outside toilets and if they were there in the old days. Outside loops? Yeah. yeah, probably. Just looking now at the photograph of my granddad and Brian Walker, it looks like every other spindle has been removed since the 1930s. What we're going to do now is go up to St Thomas's Church because we were doing family tree stuff and we're going to see if we can find the graves of Peter Vernon and his father Thomas Vernon. And it's in that church there? That churchyard, yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Let's cross the road a bit further up where there's not yeah. like a junk. It's a very dangerous road. The police yeah. station that we're passing now, my granddad's dad thought about buying that when it went up for sale in the olden days. Look at that. St Thomas's Church. There's an awful lot of Vernons here in this graveyard, ancestors and relatives of mine. In fact, the first one I want to show you, just come round here into the back, into the um, 
It's the courtyard. He wasn't a direct ancestor of mine, but here he is, 1835. You mean he was only my age when he died? Zach he died in a mining accident. Zachariah Vernon died August the 10th, 1835, 35 years old. That's like what I am now. So, I've dug out the family tree stuff, now it's stopped raining. Peter Vernon, my great 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 grandfather. He was born 1849, died 1881. He was the one that had the red line. So what we're best to do, if we have a look around the graveyard, find the graves from 1881. His father was Thomas Vernon, and he died in 1875. I've definitely been around this graveyard before, and I've probably been on a hunt for these graves. Whether I found them or not, I cannot remember, because it would have been a while. It is very nice. St Thomas's it's Church. One of the better conditioned ones I've ever seen. I'm not sure how we're best to go about this. Can we walk down here? Oh, or do do we you just... know which row it is? It I don't. Help. I tried to have a look online for some sort of grave search, but I couldn't find anything. And with that sun shining in our eyes, it's quite hard to read the graves. Have we gone completely the wrong way? I'm kind of thinking this patch in the middle might have been where the older graves were. And the headstones have been removed. Because how long do you keep graves for? Is it 100 years? Here we go, the older ones are here on the floor. 1869. Jesus, they're all of the leaves, man. I think we'll leave it and come back in the summer when all these leaves have gone and the grass has been cut. What's the plan? I think that's our walk pretty much done, to be fair. It was only going to be a <laughs> short one today anyway. We've, is it half two now-ish? Well, I've enjoyed that. So basically we've seen the ancestors of my granddad's dad, John Vernon. We've seen the pubs that they had, the Caledonian, the, the Red, Red Lion. Lion. We've seen the pub my granddad grew up in, King's, King's Arms. Arms. And here we are at the final resting place of many of the Vernon ancestors. It's hard work finding graves when you've not got a map of the graveyard that is numbered. St. Helen's Cemetery is really good. All the graves have numbers on them. I've had a bit more of a search. I have got graves here from the mid 1880s, but I give up. Graveyards are something that seem permanent, like you bury people and they'll be there forever, but they're not. Just thinking to the center of St. Helen's where B&M stands now at the back of what was St. Helen's Chapel was a graveyard. All of the graves were exhumed and a shop was built on it. Same on Church Street, where the NatWest Bank is. Again, that was a graveyard. Bodies exhumed, no trace remains. Genealogy is one of my passions. I've been doing my family tree research for years and years and years. And it's one of them where you reach a certain plateau and you found most of the information. And as you dig and dig and dig and scratch more at the surface, little snippets of information come to light that you never knew. And it helps to build up this picture. It's like doing a jigsaw puzzle without knowing what the final picture is supposed to be. Just finding pieces and seeing how they fit. Building up a picture of people's lives, how they would have lived, what they would have experienced. Good old family tree. On that note, we can smell a curry and it's sending our bellies wild in the direction of St Helens <laughs> yeah we're thinking we'll go and have some food St Helens is Merseyside tier two Minan doesn't like the stigma stigma of St Helens being Merseyside and not Lancashire but at least it's tier two but it's and tier we can two. have a pint and a curry Whee! even if you've got to get food we can go somewhere let's get eat out to help out wow look at this pub I love the green commercial inn yeah, close. Alice is too. But I'm thinking it probably doesn't do substantial meals. Can I have a Scott Chegg and five pints, please? That's the Scott's name of the chef, isn't he? Scott Chegg. <laughs> There's a pub there, the Hinge Makers Arms. Were you aware that Ashton was a major centre for Hinge Makers? I was actually. A lot of my it. Vernons in the olden, olden days were Hinge Makers. And now Hinge is a dating app. Funny how this really? change. Yeah. I wouldn't know. I am liking that mural, or whatever you'd call it. The Hinge Maker. 
I tell you what, mate, there's some hard men round here. That dad yeah. uh, shouting at his three year old kid, what are out in the road? Yeah. Oh, mate, we forgot the charity shops. Oh, well. What are our thoughts on today's walk? I mean, for me, it's not quite what I'd imagined in my head. But um, it's been all right. Weather's brightened up. I thought I'd have been able to sit with you at a table. In fact, that's something we could do when we go for a meal now. I could get it out, whack it on the table, yeah. and then do the family tree. We're on Thompson, aren't we? Yeah. James and I have just been looking at photographs from the Christmas party in 2010. Which we both on the attended. Fact that there are hardly any Christmas parties going ahead at all this year, let alone to the scale of ours 10 years ago. And we were just saying how much older and how much wiser we've become in the last 10 years. One of those applies, one of those doesn't. <laughs> we'll leave it to the viewers to guess. Yeah. So we had a few photos of the 2010 Christmas party. To the end of the video? Yeah. Put Let's share. Put Sharing is caring. <laughs> Don't put all the. We're back at the car now. We're going to go to St. Helens, have some dinner. 